Hello, and welcome to the 15th annual Los Angeles Greek Film Festival panel and Q&A series. My name is Laurel Yanelos, and I am the events coordinator. Greece has recently become the IT destination for film production, and we are here today to discuss the new programs and new incentives offered by Greece to local and foreign filmmakers, and the process of funding these films through the Greek Film Center. Before we get to that, please note that this will be an interactive panel, and you will have the chance to ask your questions by inputting them at the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. At the last half of the hour of the event, for those of you watching us on Facebook Live, if you would like to join us and the conversation, you can find the Zoom link right there on Facebook. And with that, I am so pleased to introduce to you Stephen Bernstein, award-winning cinematographer, writer, director, and author with over 30 years of experience in the industry, having worked on over films. His newest, Last Call, starring John Malkovich and Reese E. Fans. Since 2016, Bernstein has worked with members of the Greek government to expand the Greek film industry and attract international and television production to Greece. Bernstein spearheaded the tax rebate initiative to film in Greece. He has a book, which will be released in the new year, called The Filmmaker's Creative Process, to be published by Rutledge. He is currently set to begin pr production on a TV set, which will be shot in Greece. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm excited uh, to be here. Uh, as you rightly said, um, Greece is the it destination, at least here in uh, Los Angeles, where uh, I am currently based as the pandemic draws to an end. I'm anxious to get uh, back to Greece and begin to production, also facilitate the production of other films there. Lots of producers speaking to me about the prospects and opportunities of shooting there. So um, to get going, um, I'm honored to say that we have members of the um, Greek uh, Film Center here. And the Greek Film Center, for those of you who don't know, uh, is at the epicenter of this uh, new Greek uh, production uh, initiative. It's uh, you as a producer, filmmaker, as a director, will be working with some of the panelists we see today or people that work with them. And they're basically there to facilitate uh, production both in Greece and bringing international productions to cooperate with Greek production with Greek um, filmmakers. Uh, I'd like to first start with allowing each of them to introduce themselves and then once they do that there's a series of questions I'd like to put to them and begin our discussion about how uh, we can bring productions to Greece, how we can do international co-productions in Greece and how as Greek filmmakers uh, we can best facilitate and make use of the facilities available um, there. So first, um, Marcus, can you introduce yourself um, to our audience? Thanks. Yes, of course. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor for me to be in this panel because it's an opportunity to present the uh, facilities that we try to establish as a new board of directors in the Greek Film Center. I'm the president of the board of directors. Uh, to help the local industry, but in the same time, the movie industry, of course, and at the same time to provoke a mix with, uh, with the Greek producers and the Greek talents with the foreign producers. Uh, as maybe you know, uh, in uh, Europe, we have a system of uh, public institutions that support the art and the industry part, part of the movies through the film centers. Uh, this is a, a system of uh, helping uh, in all of the kinds of help that uh, an institution can give that mean uh, money, support in uh, production, in pre-production, in script writing, in uh, distribution, in uh, accommodation, in festival, etc. That means it's a global umbrella to support uh, the production of movies in our country and in other, other countries, of course, their film uh, uh, centers. So uh, we have three departments in this orientation, three directions that support the one direction who represent Mr. Angelopoulos as the director of this department, uh, represent the financing part to support the development and the uh, financing of uh, a film, a movie. And the second part is Athena Kalkopoulou, who support the distribution and at the same time, the promotion of uh, a film when it ends. 
and I must declare that uh, this department supports generally the Greek films. That means a Greek uh, origin or Greek co-production films. That means maybe it's not a film that he will be support from the Greek Film Center, but in the moment that he have the Greek uh, nationality, it will be accommodated from Athena and his uh, team. And finally, but not the, the, the last, because it's maybe for all the audience of this panel, the most important person is uh, Venia Vergu, who is the director of the Hellenic Film Commission. The uh, link between the Greek industry and the Greek uh, department of uh, possibilities that we can attend in our country generally, on, not only through the Greek Film Center, but for example, through ECOME, etc., is uh, the general of this mission, how to attract and how to provoke uh, in a micro system that will be, will be uh, attentive and attractive for a foreignist uh, producer uh, who will attend our country as an accommodation place to shoot or to post production film, because all times we talk only for shooting for shooting in countries like Greece. But uh, let me make a point that we have a good system of post-production at the same time in Greece with talents, uh, with all the equipment they need the film for make uh, post-production in our country. So uh, let's begin the presentation of our directors and uh, our departments about the possibility that they can give uh, they can uh, give in someone to have an interest to come and to make a co-production or a production in Greece. Right. Well, that, that's great. And, and um, you, you did my job for me. So you've introduced um, your, your esteemed colleagues and I'm delighted you're all here and thank you for joining us. Um, just logically spinning from what you just said, let me start then with, with, with Venya. Um, um, and let me start with the simplest of questions. Let's imagine um, that um, I or someone else is a producer in America and we have a project that we want to shoot um, in Greece. Um, uh, first of all, why shoot in Greece? And this can be your, the other panelists can join in this. What's special about Greece? And then what's the procedure for a co-production there? Thank you, Stephen, for the question. Thank you for this lovely panel. Um, why Greece? Well, obviously, because Greece has stunning and beautiful and amazing locations which are very versatile and not only the stereotypical ones that everybody knows. Greece is not only the Cycladic Islands, it has snow-capped mountains, it has forests, lakes, it has amazing uh, architecture that spans the millennia and historical sites and industrial sites and modern sites. So locations is one of the reasons. Incentives is another very good reason because recently over the last five years, Greece is a very big competitor among the European countries, offering a 40% cash rebate, which is the highest percentage in Europe right now. And of course, crews and infrastructure, we have very good crews in Greece. And this is something that we are very proud of because year after year, and because we keep accommodating more and more productions every year over the last five years, because of their incentive and because the coordinated efforts of the policymakers in Greece to attract as many productions as possible in order to have our economy and our industry grow. Um, this crew is year after year improving themselves. So every single production that has come in the country to shoot and every single testimonial we have for, from the, by these foreign producers is always negative and they always keep on saying that they are looking forward to shoot their next film. So locations, incentives, infrastructure, crews, um, and obviously the a reason for people to come to the country is the climate. We have the best climate in the world. We have sunshine all year round, daylight throughout the year. So um, it's one of the most film friendly countries in the world. And as Marco said, because of the coordinated efforts we're doing in the Greek Film Center to accommodate this need, there's also a network of film offices that start to operate in the country. So it's not only the capital, Athens, which is the hub, but also the mainland and the islands, which are also starting to offer their services. 
I think a lot of people don't realize how many and varied uh, are the locations in Greece. As you say, they think of the uh, South Aegean um, and those islands, but as you rightly say, um, there's the highest concentration of microclimates in the world outside of California is in Greece. So you have mountains, you have forests, rivers and streams, various types of architecture, et cetera. And you're in the middle of uh, Europe, really. You have, um, uh, it's easy to uh, bring actors from uh, the UK, from France, from elsewhere. And there's a long theatrical tradition inside Greece as well. So there are actors there to be had as well. Um, so the process, this is very important. This is really to the entire panel. Going back to this imagined producer, um, they've got say half their budget or more than half their budget and they want to come to Greece. I understand you've been streamlining the application program. How do they do it? What do they do? How do they apply for um, the tax incentive that's available in Greece? Well, if they're interested for the, the gas rebate, they have to apply to ECOME, which is another institution and we're very good colleagues with them, cooperating extremely well with them. So the application process goes through ECOME and it's really straightforward. They can apply all year round, uh, as long as they apply at least two, 10 days before the beginning of the production. They can even apply only for the post-production. So at least, again, at least 10 days before the post-production. Within 45 days, they have an answer. And if it's a yes, which is mostly the case because tax rebate is an automatic funding scheme, whereas the Greek Film Center offers funding schemes which are selective and uh, Yorgos Angelopoulos will explain more on that respect. But uh, since it's automatic, it's most likely that they will get in if they meet all the criteria. And as soon as they come and shoot in the country, after the completion of the production in the country, the auditing process starts, begin, begins. And after this, within six months, they have the rebate back. It is very important to know that all applications go to a come through a Greek company. So a foreign producer interested to shoot in Greece, which is basically the case in every European country operating a gas rebate scheme. It has to be done through a local production company or a line producer. Um, the minimum expenses that have to be spent in Greece are very low. For example, for a feature film is only 100,000 euros. And um, I, as I said earlier, it's, it's very important to know that all the procedures are very fast and very straightforward. So. Um, so far, uh, within these four years now that Ribery is running, we have a majority of productions coming in the country from all over the world, from the US, from the UK, from almost every European country coming in. And over, I think, 30 million have been already given back. So it has already started working really well. Fantastic. Um, Yorgos, do you want to address some of the other financial issues and concerns about how these things uh, uh, can work? So um, we basically offer uh, six different uh, funding options at the moment. And uh, although we welcome uh, foreign participants as minor co-producers co in all our uh, programs, there is one uh, specifically that is addressed to minority co-productions, which means that um, uh, it aims to attract projects um, originating outside of Greece, but with minor Greek participation. So this program is open to fiction, documentary and animation. And um, eligible for this program are foreign projects in which either there is a, a significant artistic participation in crew from Greece or Greek labs for post-production or even uh, if it's shot in Greece and uh, is using uh, Greek crew. Uh, at least 50% uh, of the finance must be secured before applying. And uh, the funding is uh, up to um, 30,000 euros in the form of subsidy or up to 100,000 euros in exchange of, uh, for a percentage of the film sales rights. So if you combine this with the cash rebate we're offering in Greece, I'd say it's uh, quite attractive. Very attractive indeed. And it also means, am I correct in presuming that it's not only feature films that can shoot there, I presume of television to shoot there and other types of production, is that correct? 
correct. Yeah, that is and correct. Anybody can shoot anything. It's just that the minority program that Yorgos refers to yes. applies to Yorgos. Yeah. Films okay. only, no TV series. The, the goal of the Geek Film Center is to support the movie industry, not generally the audiovisual industry. So all the programs, except uh, the support that Benya uh, can give in everyone, is orientated in movie industry. So Venya as a film commission can accommodate or support every audiovisual production and they come at the same time, do the same uh, support every audiovisual co-production. But the Greek Film Center, as the title uh, said it, is about cinema, about movies. Okay. Until now, because we have some uh, thoughts and we will have uh, soon some experimental programs about uh, support the development of uh, co-productions in uh, pl for platforms or for other forms of, the, of the visual uh, uh, products. So uh, we have the orientation that we see the evolution that happened in the movie sector because now we don't have a movie sector; we have an audiovisual sector, and that means if we want to be updated we must uh, have a, a continuity about our programs and see the future, the future. So we will maybe in six or more months, maybe a year, have a complete uh, schedule about how we can accommodate it in the Greek Film Center, generally audiovisual programs, because it's a low theme in the same times uh, to, to found the, um, the frame about what is movie actually and what is general a series or a, a movie cut it in episodes. Right, so it could be episodic television, um, gaming is another something that lots of people are getting into, um, of streaming of all sorts uh, and varieties. Really, it sounds to me like you're saying all these things will be available uh, via um, um, the auspices that you're providing. Um, in, in the future. Let me just go back to the 40% uh, tax um, incentive. That's very attractive and aggressive. And I think among the best, if not the best in Europe, does that cover above and below the line or just below the line? Or how does that work? Because I know it'll be a, of interest to our producers who are watching. First of all, let me clarify something, Stephen. It's cash rebate because you mentioned tax because we do have also a tax relief scheme, which is a separate, completely different thing. They do have both the same eligible expenses, but cash rebate means money that will be spent by the producers and it will be returned back after the completion, whereas the tax relief is deduction by the tax of an investor that invests in the production. And it does apply, the cash rebate scheme applies to above and below the lie. And there has been a recent change in the legislation over the last couple of months where foreign invoices are also eligible as long as they do not exceed 50% of the total eligible expenses. And this applies to projects that have at least a minimum of 8 million euros to be spent in Greece, eligible spent in Greece. Um, and is, these foreign invoices include, yeah, include yeah. Uh, director fees, script, cast and crew, except for the executive producer fee and the production company really very, very important and uh, radical in terms of what other countries are offering. So what you're saying is an American producer could um, have part of their uh, actor's cost recouped to them uh, via Greece, providing um, it's less than 50% of the budget and providing the overall budget of the project is more than 8 million euros. Is that correct? Providing that the overall money to be spent within Greek territory is at least 8 million euros. Um, that uh, makes it doubly attractive. So I, again, mm -hmm. not to tout Greece particularly, but th there's a reason um, I, I, I work there and want to work there. Um, this, uh, what's being offered, as you quite rightly say, not only the, the, the cash back, uh, but then there's the tax advantages. But now, uh, usually when we work internationally, we would only get um, any a tax incentive on our local spend. But this is not necessarily local spend because if it's above the line cost, this is money we would usually have to defray um, elsewhere. Now it could be coming at least in part uh, uh, from, uh, from the GFC or from Ecrame, which is, is fantastic and should really 
uh, close the deal for anyone considering doing a production in Europe. Can I just move the discussion to crews? You say there are great crews there, and that's been my experience. Uh, do you have enough to support the amount of productions that will be coming there? Because other international territories, your competitive yours, have had problems when they start getting overwhelmed by large productions. I know that Derry College has set up an education program. I knew no people, new people are being uh, trained. And I also know that, uh, as happened in Vancouver, once production begins, uh, people are getting experience all the time. But how are you going to address the, uh, the, the, uh, the crewing issues um, as Greece expands as a location? Well, Greece has already expanded as we speak. We have currently quite a few big productions shooting in the country from the US, Canada, and Europe, shooting or preparing to start shooting uh, within the following months. And the truth is that we need to invest a lot into developing our talent pool. And this is something that we have acknowledged. And that's why uh, we have um, organized some training workshops that we're gonna implement very soon. And also, Yorgos Agelopoulos can mention to you a, a very important addition to the funding programs of the Greek Film Center recently for film students. So this is the idea. The idea is to invest as much as we can to make sure that we have training programs, for example, for location managers, which are really crucial in the hierarchy in the product in the process of attracting foreign productions in the in the country. So one thing is to try to update their skills to the already existing professionals in order for them to be able to meet the standards of a high profile um, production. But at the same time, to make sure that we encourage young people that are postgraduates or graduates from film schools to find their way as quickly and as easy as possible in the industry. But you always have something to add. I think that it's really important. Please. So yeah, among the things uh, we introduced with the new rules and regulations, um, we've uh, introduced a link between film education and film production. And uh, we did that by securing um, paid employment for film school graduates in the crew of the film uh, productions that we support. This way we can make sure that uh, as soon as they graduate uh, from school, they can get immediately experience in uh, professional environment. That's uh, fantastic and, 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 and important. Well, we've talked a lot about international productions. Um, uh, we've got uh, Greek uh, listeners and viewers. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, local production and uh, how they would uh, approach uh, you and how you would work with them? And then also the, the thorny issue of productions in the Greek language or in um, uh, another language like English, uh, which affects the ability to market these films abroad. Uh, anyone want to take either of those questions? So um, in terms of uh, local production, um, we basically, my department is in charge of the development and production funding programs. And uh, up until recently, the department was quite dysfunctional because of severe delays in evaluation of submissions. But uh, the last few months we've made a tremendous progress. So we managed to stop all this waiting and announce the results for all these submissions. And by doing that, uh, we were ready to announce the new rules and regulation for fundings which we did a few weeks back. So now the future looks brighter for local production. And uh, we have announced uh, six different options. We increased the maximum funding per project. Uh, we introduced new tools and schemes uh, that will make a difference in the years to come, we believe. So now we support all stages of a film from writing to development and productions. And uh, we're making sure that documentaries and animation projects uh, have the exact same funding opportunities as fiction. Um, we've started a new fund, especially for projects coming from first time directors, as we want the Greek Film Center to be an ally on their first steps. And uh, we also aim to encourage the production of films for children and young audiences. And therefore we have a point system that uh, boosts this kind of project. 
So we take a, couple, a few steps that I believe will make a huge difference in the years to come to the local industry. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see the results uh, very soon. This is, uh, look, if I had to design a, a model, a program, uh, you've, you've, put, you've put it together there. I think it's fantastic. All the issues that most of us who deal internationally have, uh, you've addressed. So crewing, uh, film education, building infrastructure, a very clear and streamlined funding system uh, whereby uh, it, it's transparent, it's pellucid, people know what they have to do, what the application is, when they'll get the money back, um, and you've got great locations, excellent crews, which I've had direct experience of, which are top notch, you're training more, and you've got cast, the cast there, if uh, American producer, and I'm doing something in English, um, uh, are there lots of English speakers in Greece? Um, and what's the uh, landscape with other European countries? Uh, is there any special range with the EU to bring in crew or cast from the EU and still get uh, uh, tax or uh, cash benefits? Uh, Venya, you want to answer or I will answer? Uh, you can start and I can okay. fill in. Uh, of course, in the United Europe, uh, we don't have problem to uh, travel and work uh, as crews um, if, through the countries. So you can use uh, a crew from other countries if they are member of AU. Now we have a problem with UK that they are not member of AU. <laughs> so, and uh, I know you from States, you like the people from <laughs> United Kingdom. So you must try to find other people from other countries. Yes, I can tell the level of the English speaking world, uh, people in Greece is very high. Okay, if you want someone speaking as actor as Pacino, Maybe it's difficult to found in Greece, but maybe it's difficult to found in all Europe. So, uh, of course, uh, you have a, a big uh, vendalia of uh, uh, actors with big experience, uh, younger and older. Don't uh, uh, we can remember the period of Irini Papas or, or now of more uh, new actors like um, uh, Angeliki Papulia, etc. So, uh, Papulia, not Angeliki. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you can find the people you need. Okay. If you understand that you are in a forest country, that means you cannot find that you found in the United States. But let's make a question and not only answers. If I go in another country and in another environment, I must use it not as a handicap, but a privilege. That means if you want to come to shoot in Greece, you must be orientated that your script, your uh, necessities, uh, all that you want to found in Greece is that you found in Greece. Because if you can found it in States or in Bulgaria and you come only for a cash rebate, for me, is not the uh, the wrong is not the right policy. You must have a blending in this job to take the good things that you have before be uh, before your camera in your uh, uh, film, and on, not only invest in the money that you can have from a country. Yes, no, I don't think I completely get what you're saying. I don't think anyone would be coming to Greece just for the money. But producers, um, uh, you won't be surprised to learn, care a great deal about uh, their bottom line, as they would say in America. So what I think you're offering is both the opportunity to produce something economically in one of the most beautiful places on earth with some of the most skilled um, crews and available. And, and most important, what you just said, was the entire European continent, which has a huge cast and crew base to the biggest actors and actresses in the world, which can be um, converted monetarily in the marketplace, um, because a lot of producers live in that marketplace, are available to shoot um, in Greece. And it's a, maybe a two hour flight away to bring a French or a German or a Spanish uh, uh, or an Irish uh, actor. Um, I lived in England for 25 years. Uh, why we left um, uh, the glorious continent of Europe, I don't know, but that's another issue for another day. But that said, um, anyone shooting in Greece would have the opportunity to bring in crew from anywhere in Europe and still have all the advantages. Although I hope they would first use 
uh, a, a Greek uh, crew. Venya, uh, I, I cut you off, and then I very much want to get to Athena uh, uh, and talk about the new promotion programs. But first, Venya, if you go ahead, please. Just a very quick comment to add up uh, what uh, Marcos has mentioned. Uh, recently, we have a lot of co-productions from Europe where they do have Greek actors uh, in their crews, in their team, and they're greatly surprised by the skills and the temperament and their English, obviously. And it was not long ago, it was also something like 50 years ago where we used to keep talking about the language barrier and about how Greek films are able to fly across the board uh, abroad from Greece and travel across. But as of now, I will tell you now, uh, this is not the case any longer. Greek films and Greek productions travel everywhere and get back with many awards. Absolutely. And look, one of the best filmmakers, a lot of us, one of the best filmmakers in the world is, 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 is Greek, as people, not everyone in America realizes. Um, uh, my friend Alex Petoulas is uh, one of the finest commercial directors in the world, produces Ridley Scott quality commercials in Greece um, um, and uh, of the, the highest production standard. I saw his reel um, in New York, and I thought it was a big uh, American uh, production company, and it was a Greek one. So anything, uh, it sounds like I'm, I'm touting the place. I'm only touting it because I've been there, uh, I've worked there, I've got many friends there in the industry, and right now, to me, as speaking as a producer, as a writer, as a director, it's the best place in the world uh, to make films and, and uh, television, and people should be um, going there. Athena, forgive me for um, not asking you questions earlier. Um, you know, the way films get promoted very often is via uh, festivals, and I've been to uh, most of the big festivals in the world, Cannes, Venice, et cetera, uh, and then, then just learning about locations and about, uh, you know, the promotions that we have to do to bring productions to places like Greece. Can you tell us a bit about the promotion work you're doing and about your festival support? Uh, hello from me. Hello. Um, so um, our job at the promotion department of the Greek Film Center is um, to make sure Greek cinema gets seen and appreciated by its different audiences, uh, both in Greece and all over the world. So um, we work with filmmakers regardless of whether their project has been funded by the Greek Film Center or not. Um, and we work towards um, their um, audience engagement strategies. Um, uh, of course, as you said, that starts usually, um, hopefully, um, at a, um, uh, with a festival premiere. So um, um, we uh, work with a lot of the festival programmers and recommend films to them. And um, also, as Venya mentioned earlier, um, there's um, Greek films have been making, um, um, uh, have been uh, everywhere at, at, at most major film festivals in, in, in the last few years. Um, uh, and so um, there's, there's a lot of demand and people are interested in, in what we have to, um, uh, to, to offer to them, what films we have to recommend to them. Um, so we have uh, some funding uh, schemes as well, uh, whereby we help the Greek filmmakers to attend um, their festival premiere and to prepare their promotional materials uh, for their festival premiere. And then our, our logic with that is, um, of course, we um, kind of enable them uh, to, to have a, a you know, proper festival appearance, but also um, um, we work with them so that they can um, uh, move on to, to a life for the film after the first premiere. Um, and so this is what we do. Uh, we also have um, a, a scheme where why, whereby we support um, domestic distribution of Greek films, um, especially uh, when the Greek films um, uh, get shown at cinemas, not just in Athens or the major um, cities in Greece, but all over the country. Um, you know, um, wanting to, to make sure that Greek films are available sometimes, you know, um, the films that make it to the smaller areas are the, the big American blockbusters and not the Greek films or the European films. So, so we're hoping to contribute towards changing that somewhat. Um, and then uh, we also have, um, uh, we also provide festival support. So we work with film festivals that um, show Greek films, um, obviously the ones in Greece, but also film festivals like the LA Greek Film Festival and other uh, Greek film festivals around the world. And, and actually this was um, uh, our, our new um, 
uh, funding program for that was only announced two days ago. So um, uh, we help out by covering screening fees that the festival gives to Greek films, to screen Greek films, uh, or um, uh, we help with travel expenses for the Greek filmmakers to the festivals. Um, so this is more or less what we do. And a vital uh, function. I mean, this is the complete uh, uh, picture. We have, uh, we have funding, we have crews, we have locations. And now, um, uh, and of course, post-production, which is something that uh, I, I, I want, I'll, I'll come back to, but uh, very often with uh, these programs around the world, uh, you have to fully fund uh, all parts of your film uh, via the, the, the initiative. But it sounds like someone could bring their post to Greece and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, take advantage of some of these funding opportunities, but also to have the support of really a marketing department um, uh, from you to help these films find a market and to find screens is essential for a filmmaker. And many countries don't offer this. So I think it's very exciting for anyone working um, in Greece to have that opportunity. And um, also, also, I wanted to add that um, uh, lately we've noticed also um, um, a lot of uh, sales agent interest in Greek films. So we do get a lot of um, uh, queries about films um, that have a international distribution, which is great. Well, it's, it's very important. Look, government funding is a wonderful thing. Um, films that generate money in the marketplace are also wonderful because it could represent millions, if not tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions coming into the Greek uh, economy. So a successful Greek film or Greek co-production that becomes a success uh, in Europe, uh, in the, 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 the far and Middle East and in the Americas uh, would be a wonderful thing uh, for Greece. And it doesn't mean necessarily any uh, creative compromise. Uh, all sorts of uh, projects catch fire just because of the, the quality uh, of the production, the quality of the writing, of the acting, um, or the location. So uh, my hope is that uh, films are made in Greece, have international success, and generate income, which then can be fed back into the Greek industry. And as Venya was saying, can then retrain another generation of filmmakers so it continue to expand. I, I, there's so many other things I want to mention. There's a studio being built um, in Sotoliki, but I, I'll come back to that. But we're getting some questions now from the audience, and I'd like to go to that if I could. Uh, the first question uh, to all the panelists is, uh, mini series have exploded in the US. Um, is there a market for them in Greece? And how would a, a US Greek co-production work to shoot a mini series? Uh, open to anyone on the panel. Thank you. Well, um, miniseries is, is the thing everywhere right now in the world. So um, there are quite a few um, miniseries that come to Greece to shoot, which are not exactly uh, drama uh, right now. We have a lot of, you know, traveling uh, miniseries, a lot of um, gastronomy miniseries shooting in Greece or historical uh, miniseries. But for example, we had The Little Drama Girl, which was shot here in Greece by BBC. And this was a, a very interesting case, which I wanted to mention uh, to point out that one of the amazing thing about the versatile uh, landscape in Greece is that some locations can also stand for other countries. So The Little Drama Girl, uh, the Little Drama Girl is one of those productions where they were shot in Greece, Dublin for former Yugoslavia, Palestine, uh, Italy, and so forth, or Tehran, an Apple TV, TV series production uh, that was shot entirely in Greece, in Athens, for the first season, and then now they're preparing to shoot season number two. They shoot, shot in Greece, in Athens, as if they were in Tehran, in Iran. So um, the landscape is here um, welcoming everybody, um, no matter all, if it's going to be a feature a drama, a documentary, a series or not. It always has to do with um, content, script, crew and funding. Yeah, we've getting some questions here about the cost to shoot in Greece. Um, is it more expensive, less expensive to shoot in Greece? Are there unions there? Are there minimum requirements? Normal producing questions want to know what their overheads are going to be. Um, difficult to control, uh, compare apples and oranges, but would you say it's generally less expensive to shoot in Greece than, say, America or England? Of course, well, it's least. Very leaser. Say again, sorry. <laughs> yes, the difference is very much. It depends what you need exactly, because you must compare, uh, for example, a, a, 
a minimum uh, film of a crew of 60 uh, persons or of 200 persons. Okay, it's different. A small production or a big production, but generally we can tell that Greece is very, very more expensive than to shooting in the United States. L less expensive. Less, more, yeah. less expensive, right. right. Um, yeah. And are there unions there? And are there, uni are there requirements when you employ someone to pay their local tax to the government? Or how does that work? Because people naturally ask about that. Yes, of course. So everyone, there... uh, Venya, please. No, no, no. Carry on, carry on, Marcos. Please. Please. There are unions, of course, and they have to be um, insurance. They have to cover their insurance. And in terms of the tariffs and, and, and the money and whether we are expensive or not, we keep having this question very often, but it's difficult to answer, as Marco said, because it depends on the actual project and the budget, the scheme, the, the crew size and all that. But one would say that we are less expensive than let's say UK and the US and their northern countries. Um, so compared to the most European countries were less expensive. Uh, look, I, I can speak more because I understand your, your hesitancy, but um, as an international producer who's worked in many countries, in my experience, things are, are, are less expensive for the same quality. That's the, the, the key thing. Don't think that you're getting a lower quality because you're shooting in Greece, but very often your costs are, are, are somewhat less. Um, location management, um, is it difficult? Greeks have so many historic sites um, and um, very important they're protected. Um, tell us about location work there, location, whether it's photo libraries, location managers, and how difficult it is to shoot in historic sites. And is there someone who will um, act as an intermediary between those who manage those sites and the filmmakers? As we keep saying at the Hellenic Film Commission, let us guide you. So one that needs information on all that respect comes to us. And because the Greek Film Center is supervised by the Ministry of Culture, we have very good uh, bonds with the Ministry of Culture, which is the ministry under which the jurisdiction all archeological sites are. So we are here to guide everyone on, on how to get filming permits for archeological sites. It's not difficult as many people uh, might say, uh, you just need to know exactly to whom to apply to. And um, we had made some progress over the last three years now um, where it's much more straightforward because each effort of antiquity responds to a request. Whereas before it used to go through the Central Archaeological Council and that was quite time consuming. Now it's much more straightforward and every single uh, department of the Ministry of Culture is eager to help us and uh, support the request. Now, in terms of intermediate, there's no intermediate. Um, location managers can come to us if they need any help. We are here to intervene if they have some problems. And very often, Marcos and myself also stand here to help them out if they have some obstacles to overcome. Um, but our location managers are very good and they know very well how to handle local authorities and how to showcase the different locations to producers. Yeah, look, I would just give you an advice if I could to any producers who are watching this, um, uh, at least go to Greece and um, go on a location scout. Um, it's, uh, it, it's an incredible country to see. It's different that if you haven't been, then you might imagine it. And for me, again, it's the variations in landscape um, that are so uh, stunning. If you haven't seen Mithyra, it's one of the most remarkable places on earth. Um, uh, Corfu is very different from um, Santorini or Helios or, or any of the other thousands of islands that are there. Um, and there, I, I don't think there's location, and there's, by the way, there's snow in Greece. Always people are stunned when I tell them they can find snow in Greece. Uh, they can, um, and it's uh, remarkable and, uh, and beautiful. So all things uh, uh, certainly to consider, sir. For example, you can, we, sorry, we encourage Benya. Uh, we have, for example, the area of Pieria, who is an area of a beach of 30 kilometers of sand. And in the half an hour, you are in the mountain of Olympus, who is the most big mountain uh, in uh, Greece. And at the same time, the mountain of the gods, etc. And you thought you are in Switzerland. Okay. Uh, in the same time, in a half hour, uh, Copacabana and uh, Switzerland. <laughs> No, exactly. No, I, I felt when I was there, I was in Switzerland. It's uh, complete with the little trains and the snow and everything else. Uh, then I cut you off. Sorry, go on. 
we encourage everybody to come and see with their own eyes and come through us to ask for support and money for their location scouting because we have launched a location scouting support fund through the Film Commission as long as they have um, a Greek company attached to them. So a Greek, a foreign producer interested to shoot in Greece, they can come scouting, ask for support money from us as long as they have found a Greek collaborator. This is again one of the most, there's been so many important things that have been said uh, this morning, uh, at least this morning here in Los Angeles, that's one of the most important. The opportunity for a producer to go to Greece and see firsthand the locations and meet the crews and see the post-production and see the film studios that are available to them um, in Greece um, and to get some support from uh, the, the center itself to achieve that. Um, is an opportunity that I don't think anyone should uh, should pass up on. Once you're there, you'll see, as I have, it's enormous potential and want to bring your productions there. And if you're a Greek person working there, now that things have been streamlined and I think simplified, it's the best time uh, to make films, I think, in Greece that has been uh, in the last 25 years or 30 years or 40 years I've been coming to Greece. Um, I'm getting old. Um, uh, people have asked about uh, the uh, obligations for foreign productions, and I'm sorry this is so foreign based, but so many of so much of our audience is UK or US based. Uh, is there uh, a requirement to uh, employ a certain percentage of Greek actors to get access to any of these benefits? Well, the cash rebate operates on a cultural test uh, basis where one applicant has to meet some points. Uh, one of these points being if you apply, if you employ uh, people from the economic European um, area. So if you, as many Greek crew and cast uh, you employ, uh, the better for uh, the person that applies for their base, particularly crew. Yeah, people should understand how, because this is, many countries do this. Um, we say 40%, um, it, it may be 40%. Uh, you could get different percentages based on these tests that they apply to what benefits you're providing to the locale you're shooting in, which is perfectly reasonable. So if you use an all Greek crew, all Greek cast, um, and you shoot there and, and you're gonna get more than if you mix the things together. Although I guess the EU counts against that uh, cultural credit or not? The Europe, in terms of the crew they're using, if they employ crew members from the European economic area countries, they are eligible. They are. This is fantastic. They get extra points at the cultural test. This is fantastic. So um, for people who have uh, a French, uh, Greek co-production, Spanish, French, Greek, um, again, I'm sorry to all my friends in England um, uh, who many are watching, you're missing this opportunity, uh, but um, I'm sure in time that will be um, resolved. Um, so a little bit about uh, distribution in Greece. People are asking about that, I guess, people are interested in bringing films. What, what is the, uh, obviously we've been had a pandemic, what is the um, cinema situation now in, the U, in, in, in Greece? Will the cinemas be opening soon? And uh, I guess this might be for Athena um, about distributing uh, a Greek uh, American co-productions in Greece. Um, are there opportunities there to distribute films directly in Greece? Um, so I uh, have the pleasure to report that uh, open air movie theaters opened in Greece a couple of weeks ago. So we are so happy that finally we can watch a, a film on the big screen. Uh, that's very exciting. Um, uh, but we hope that uh, regular movie theaters will open from September. Unfortunately, um, they have been closed since early November. I believe of 2020 because of COVID. Um, uh, in regards to distribution, um, uh, there are uh, it's it's fairly traditional, I guess, compared to the U.S. Uh, we, I mean, theatrical distribution, of course, is is the main is the main thing. So there are um, certain distribution companies uh, that people um, are in touch with, um, and then they are in, they cover uh, the majority of the of the greek market and then we have seen lately that some producers have started um distributing their films independently uh, so that has that has worked um uh yeah okay 
People have asked, um, and I, I should have covered this, and it's my failure, what is Equime? Could someone explain what that is and what they do? Because people, many people have asked us what it is. Equime is an institution that uh, is a company uh, formed if, uh, five years before uh, from the Minister of uh, Digital Policy. And uh, they, they have uh, many goals to to attend, for example, they must, it's the national audiovisual uh, archives in the same time, institution in the same time. That is the reason I mentioned before, they are orientated in all the audiovisual umbrella and not only in the movies as we are as another institution. So uh, the, the most important for them uh, goal is to uh, make the cash-rebate system that they made it, that means the possibility of an automatic funding system to approach the audiovisual sector, not only the international, but the local too. Because, for example, a TV series that we will be shooting in Greece from an independent uh, channel, it will be support from a COMEC, as a UK or a United States mini series that come shoot in Greece. It's generally the umbrella to support the audiovisual uh, sector through a system of cash rebate. At the same time, uh, through law, they established a tax uh, uh, rebate system. That means tax rebate is orientated only for the local uh, market because we must be someone, someone must be taxed in the country to have tax uh, rebate. Okay, or tax degrees, and in the same time, uh, okay, they try in the, to pro, to promote Greece too as an attractive area to come to shooting. So we have li a little conflict in this area because officially, uh, ten years before we established the uh, the film commission, who is a international brand name, and at the same time, Ecome make campaigns, may promotion of the country. So one of the goals that we, we try to do as the new board of directors in the Greek Film Center is, is to make a, an umbrella about Greece in the promotion of uh, the country as an attractive place for audiovisual uh, industry. So in Cannes, for example, this year we will be in one pavilion. Okay, and not two as uh, years before. So we try to find the, the, the little uh, convenience that the law of ECOME provoke in uh, our ecosystem and to manage it, it that you don't have in, uh, as foreign as producers, uh, two different antennas and two different uh, 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 strategies to to cooperate in your uh, plans and your ideas. That's fantastic news for um, anyone interested in uh, production in Greece. It's been streamlined and combined, and now we know what uh, Equime is. You know, someone asked a very direct and personal question. And I think it's important because uh, I've made films all around the world, many other people uh, here listening have as well. Um, and when you go and you live in a place, um, the quality of your life uh, affects the quality of your film. What is generally the attitude of ordinary Greek people and Greek crews about foreign productions uh, coming there? And what's life like in Greece for a crew or a cast who's never shot there before? Oh, my, my experience, because I begin uh, to establish, as I tell before, the film commission in a uh, period of 10, in 2010, uh, I think that nothing changed. They are very friendly. They are very interesting to accommodate it, uh, a crew or actors in a small village or in an island for two reasons. The one reason is the mentality of Greeks. They are people that they want to know, to, 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 to have experience in their life. They are not close people. And the second uh, is simple, is economy for them. We don't forget that Greece live from tourism in many areas. That means if a crew come and make a film and after this film have a success, the accommodation of tourists will be grow. 
they see this uh, evaluation in, uh, uh, in the island of Rhodes in 60s, in uh, Amorgos in 80s, and recently with uh, Mamma Mia in uh, Skiathos and uh, in Skopelos. So the local people know that it's an interest for them to be, uh, uh, to be not only friendly, but efficient in the accommodation of a crew because this is an investment for them. It's an investment in their main job, that is the tourism. You know, I, 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 sorry, uh, Danny, go ahead and sorry. And, and also just to add that Greek crews are mavericks and they are very good in problem solving and in finding solutions, which is key when a production is shooting in the country. So uh, they're outspoken, they're very um, friendly and hospitable, but they're also very good in finding solutions. Um, and this has come as a testimonial by many foreign producers that I have shot here. And look, as I've, I've lived, as I said, as several Pedro times. Papa Michael, his experience in uh, shooting in Arcadia, Lost Arcadia was the film he, we shoot with uh, Nick Nolte. They have the experience that they have a guy uh, who tell them the meteo 10 minutes before you have the raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's not just that. Look, I, I've lived in many places around the world. Um, I spent a long time living in, in Greece. Uh, and I, I must say that um, for those of you watching uh, or listening who haven't experienced Greek culture, uh, it is singular. Um, for those of us who live in California, uh, we think cynically that everyone is always working an angle. Um, they're not. Um, uh, Greek people genuinely are uh, hospitable. It's not a myth. It's not uh, uh, something to put in a tourist brochure. Um, you'll be stunned and amazed uh, how kind, hospitable, a warm, loving, supportive, creative uh, Greek people are. And that, the reason I'm hosting this panel, that in combination with the considerable creative abilities, the remarkable locations, this combination of microclimates uh, virtually unique uh, in the world, uh, these tax benefits of the cash money back, uh, the tie-in to the EU, allowing you to bring crews and cash from elsewhere, the large number of um, English speaker, its international location, um, all makes a Greece to me, the perfect place uh, to bring a film, or if you're living there already, uh, to, to, to make a film. And then through the work of Athena, um, the, the ability to then market it um, internationally, to take it to, uh, uh, to festivals and have that sort of support, to be able to location scout and get support of a local government. All these things I think are singular um, in the world. So I'm an unpaid um, advocate. I simply uh, love the place. Uh, I love Greek film, I love uh, Greek filmmakers, uh, and uh, I love the Greek people. So I think we're going to have to uh, wrap it up. Um, um, just very briefly, any last remarks from the panelists? If not, thank don't you hesitate. all. Go ahead, Marco, sorry. Sorry, Stephen, don't hesitate to ask any information you need about taking your decision through Venia, through Yorgos, or through Rathina. Absolutely, and I hope everyone uh, does that. And um, uh, thank you all very much for giving of uh, your time. Um, I will uh, pass it back um, and um, I will step away. But uh, thank you uh, um, very uh, much. And there's Laurel. Uh, over to you, Laurel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephen and Marcos and Athena, Venia and Yorgos for being with us here today. Thank you to all of our sponsors and thank you to all of you joining us today and thank you for your support of Greeks in Cinema. Before we log off, make sure you are registered to join us on Saturday, May 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for our highly anticipated live round table panel on how the need for diversity is changing the industry. A live dialogue between African Greeks and African Americans in the entertainment industry. You can find the complete schedule on lagff.org under events and make sure you're following us on Instagram and Facebook for the latest updates and surprise events. Until Saturday, bye for now.